Hey, Retcon Raider here. Today's video is dedicated to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. With special thanks to Revenant, a nerd in war paint, Antonio Hernandez, Ice Storm Shadow, Matthew Holmquist, Nathan Welch Jr., and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to uh, Solasta, Crown of the Magister, as uh, we continue on this one last quest. Uh, I've said it before, but um, I am genuinely impressed, because keep in mind, this may be the final quest of the EA build, but it is by no means the final quest of the actual game. We need eight gems. This is the quest for gem number three. And keep in mind, this is without any of the uh, optional locations or side quests that won't be added until the full launch build. Anyway, let's uh, go catch up with the Baron and then we'll head back out. Lady Kitaeya, dear friends, words are not enough to convey my thanks. Your swift action has saved my life and our veil. We shall be more wary of the Council's warnings. The Council warned you? Indeed. I thought they exaggerated, alas. If anything, they weren't loud enough. Sorax are real! You saw them with your own eyes! Their presence was a clear message. Be wary. Be careful. True. We won't let our guard down. How does this change your position? Do you plan to join the Council? Or simply to help us in our endeavors? We shall join. The discovery of the Hidden Gate will allow us to communicate swiftly. But enough about matters of state. The Cynard has the right of it. The only benefit of power is the ability to reward friends. And true friends of Corporan, you have proven to be. Thanks for your kind words. We feel quite rewarded. You are hereby granted permanent citizenship of Corporan, with all associated rights, as well as free use of our rediscovered gate. The keys to the town, maybe? And these gems from our minds are well suited to holding enchantments. Go forth on your journey with our blessings. Many thanks for your generous gifts. May Einar watch over Copperan. Well, I feel like some uh, pre-enchanted items might have made for a more generous reward, but... Oh, wow. These are actually really valuable. Yeah, okay. Uh, consider my loot lust at least momentarily appeased. Thank you, Baron. That aside, uh, I also actually kind of get the impression that they were almost too generous in this last arc. The bag of holding, the half dozen wondrous items. Um, it is possible that at least some of this might just be placeholder stuff. Just so you could play with some new toys right before the end of the current EA build. I would not be surprised if the full launch build is a bit more frugal. Ah, I see. The developers do have a habit of uh, popping food caches in areas where they expect you to be resting or traveling. Though I will say, uh, that, that definitely threw me a bit, because it did look like we could go into these back rooms. And I really assumed that would somehow tie into this whole The Baron Might Be a Sorak quest. Like we'd have to break in or something, fight our way through guards to rescue the real Baron, or sneak in and find evidence as to what's really going on. But instead, it is basically just a glorified pantry. We never ended up heading into the mine, but uh, I imagine we will revisit that location in the full game. Maybe it'll be a side quest or something. Anyway, let's uh, go ahead and dump this excess loot, and we'll hit the road.
See where Lady Cathayla takes us next. Well met. What can we do for you on this fine morning? What do you sell? You know what? Let's uh, load up on hand axes. I notice we get about a 1 in 3 loss rate when we toss those things around. We'll grab some more bolts, too. There we go. Onward, my friends. Oh, you know what? I have not attuned half this new gear we just got. Looks like that leaves one open slot on Henrik. Ah, and one slot on Istvan. So we've still got some room to play with. Master's Tower. It's interesting because... No, maybe not. I was thinking they might be equidistantly placed from uh, the the center of the cataclysm, uh, air ally, but it doesn't really create an even curve or line. Hmm. I'm also curious if the Oracle is supposed to play a bigger role in the final game, even just as an optional side location. That's an awfully fancy name for what amounted to a bridge over a river. Wow, okay. I really thought we'd have at least one random encounter. No introductory cutscene. Let's try wiggling around a little. Nope. Alright, well, let's go ahead and get buffs up. We'll start poking around. I can hear... There's something strange about this place. Yeah, I can hear, uh, dog sounds. Estate entrance. Visitors prohibited. 
noted and promptly ignored. Human tracks. I like how it always suggests it might be bandits, but it never actually is. Hi there. I believe I have located the source of those dog sounds. Also, I guess we're fighting. Sir? Damn it. You're fine, dude. That was a good shot. In fact, let's push the attack. Alright, so we've got two dire wolves and a large arctic wolf with a cold breath. Well, that sounds like a winter wolf. Neat. There does appear to be a third dire wolf on the timeline, but I'm not seeing it on the field. Yeah! Of course we've been detected. Let's get this guy off our flank. Nice. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess Henrik will just run right in. Dude's not exactly subtle. Kithaela actually has real spells now. Which I suppose makes sense. She did mention finding a spell book. Surprise is done. Now we have an actual fight on our hands. Take that. Operation Living Roadblock has been successful. How tiresome. So where's this last one? Oh, coming from behind us. Okay. Huh. 
Huh. I really thought he'd go right for Sir. Finish off the white wolf. Sorry. And one left. No quarter given. We should be able to burn this thing down before it gets another turn. do it. It was so one-sided I almost feel bad. Especially with those noises they were making. Yeesh. Hmm. We're getting winter wolf pelts from the dire wolves. That's probably not intended. Kind of hard pressed to figure out how we would have used these. The wolves um, weren't exactly standing still. All right, so let's get our bearings here. We've got. What looks to be a crossroads. So I guess we'll go right to left. Well, that's interesting, but... How do we get over there? That's definitely traversable ground. I suppose we could fly or teleport, but that really doesn't seem very practical. Oh, okay. I see. So we just created a bridge. Um, I'm assuming we have to circle around and then use that bridge to reach the area we can see but can't actually get to. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Let's head left next. Map out the edges before we start filling in the center. Well, that looks promising. No access from here, so we'll keep circling. Ha! 
Okay. Okay. Ah, so that, that gives us access to this building, but let's finish filling out the edge. Oh yeah, I am, uh, I'm definitely hearing flapping. Flying snakes. Just a thing in Celasta, apparently. I can't see much point in trying to get high ground against flyers, so we'll just nuke them from here. <laughs> or maybe not. I noticed they are conveniently spaced just far enough apart to prevent what I was trying to do. Well played, Solasta. Nice hit. And honestly, with surprise, we should be able to drop two maybe three of these things before they even get a turn, so we do still have a clear advantage. Especially since beasts are well inside your breath's wheelhouse. And that's one. Have Sir hang back, wait for a shot. Well struck. You're fine. Everything is fine. There we go. That is two. And here they come. 
Run while you can. Okay, so clearly we should not underestimate these things. That was 25 damage on your breath. Thank you, Henrik. Man, that, uh, that took a real sharp sideways turn when that thing actually landed a hit. Gotta remind myself sometimes that this is mid-level adventuring. We're up in the uh, level 6 or 7 range, so we'll definitely be seeing some pretty respectable damage numbers. It's like those uh, gabos back at the waterfall. Totally caught me off guard with the huge damage output. It's too quiet. Yeah, let's uh, avoid the giant, blatant walkway between these two open buildings. Nothing of note. Let's get those lights up, just in case. I wonder what the point of clearing these windows is. I feel like they wouldn't put it as an option if it didn't serve some sort of purpose. We've got a moonlight puzzle. This is the place. And it's had recent visitors. Look here in the mud. A boot print. And the rain has only just stopped. Let's be careful. Difficult to read anything here. Lady Kathaila, do you know how to enter the tower? Yes. I will give uh, Yvrath credit there. It was indeed difficult to pick out that one boot print. It was uh, heavily obscured by all those other boot prints. Mm. Okay, okay. So, we have a double moonlight puzzle. That obviously means we have to wait till nightfall. Which gives us ample time to finish clearing this area. Maybe these vine patches are just intended to, like, lull you into a false sense of security. 
so that you stop chopping them down and then miss, like, the one or two that actually lead somewhere. Oh, that looks interesting. Kind of like a little leaf-covered fish pond. I wonder if we can get up top there. Aha! Uh -huh. We've got a submerged loot bag. And something going on with the wall. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That is pretty much perfectly spaced to let us leap from this rock and into the window. And then we can knock down that uh, chunk of the wall inside and presumably circle around and drain this pond. We'll, uh, we'll fill out the courtyard first. That's where we came in. Hmm. Once again, my expectations have been subverted. I really thought we'd have like a giant monster in the center of this platform. Looks kind of familiar, don't you think? Does it? Maybe that flashback sequence? Maybe the platform we found the crown on? There's something under the ground. Where? Oh, look at that. That is sneaky. Uh, it is one of the very few items we've encountered that we can interact with, but that did not highlight when I held down the highlight button. And a belt of dwarven kind. Wow. I'm not even sure who to give this to. I mean, I guess Yavreth would be a logical choice, but... Then I would have to shuffle our gear again. That's especially problematic because I've got her belt slot tied up with components. I'm not sure if rangers are actually supposed to need components, but um, in her case, I noticed she suddenly stopped being able to cast spells without them after the latest patch, so that may or may not have been intentional. I guess I could just give it to Sir. Feels a bit redundant, but I could easily toss that brooch of shielding to someone else. I guess we'll worry about that later.
Istvan, man. Where, where are you going? What's the plan here? Yeah, come on back. Looks like you've done that all your life. Thank you, sir. That's not a weird thing to say. You don't mind being on your knees, do you? Inappropriate. So what are we supposed to do here? We could shoot that down, but it would be too low to actually facilitate jumping. Well, let's see what happens. Yeah, elevation's wrong. I don't get it. Unless they intend to eventually introduce leaping to variable elevations, I don't get the point of this room. Dive in the dirt now. Let's have a look from the other side. I think, I think I get it. Maybe, maybe the intent was to give the player a way to bypass the flyers and then come at them from the other side. I think there was a raised area behind them that would have made a more ideal platform to fight them from. I don't know though, because then you could theoretically have just gone up the middle because there's the short path straight to the, straight to the tower. Yeah, I don't know. It will forever be a mystery. Moving on. Yeah, see, the uh, the vines there clearly led to a secret path. So I suppose if we had gotten inured to tearing them down earlier, we might have actually missed it. As unlikely as that might be. Mm. Hey, there's our rest point. So now we have somewhere we can wait until nightfall. Though I think I saw a bench back in front of the tower too, so... We could have used that as well. Oh, and I bet we, uh, I bet we can reach that area. Yeah, where we shot the pillar when we first came in. Nice. I do like it when things come full circle. Wait, did... I think one of our guys just said something. 
Oh, sneaky. Huh. You know, I... I have to wonder now if I have ever walked past any other loot caches without even noticing them. Because uh, while I do make heavy use of the highlight button, those do not light up. And that is clearly another set of elven boots. We don't really have any other stealth characters, though, so I'm not sure that would be worth the attunement slot. I, Brandel Sharpleaf, being of sound mind and body, do hereby bequeath... No, we saw this before. We... Twice. We saw this twice. This must be a placeholder for something else. Um, as I have noted before, we are definitely coming up on the end of the current early access, so... We might see some blatant placeholders and unfinished stuff. Then again, who knows, maybe Brandel Sharpleaf just left a whole bunch of stuff in random places to Lady What's-Her-Face. We'll give it another look once we hit launch. We've got a whole bunch of stuff going on here. Let's get some lights up. We'll have to circle back around for that. And once again, elevation is uneven, so we can't jump. You know what? We will just keep this simple. We've got a long rest point handy, so we'll pop a fly spell. <laughs> Tales of the Flying Dwarf. I feel like there's a reference in there somewhere. It's just not springing to mind. Come on, you had me excited there for a second. I thought we were about to get our first magic crossbow. Well, I guess we can go out that window, can't we? And another primed battle axe. All right, well, some uh, halfway decent stuff. Nothing to really write home about. I do hope that in the final game they even out the spread on weapons a bit, because we could really use a magic hand axe or a crossbow. There's just not much support for those.
Anyway, I feel like we've done a pretty full sweep out here. But I will do one more pass off screen just to make sure we're not missing anything too obvious. Uh, but yeah, we will uh, hit the pause button for now. I'll take care of that and uh, get our equipment reorganized, take care of our resting, and we will pick up here next time. As we wait to nightfall, crack open that tower and uh, see what awaits us within. See you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Solasta, Crown of the Magister, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official YouTube and Twitch channels, the official social media feeds, or the official store pages. As always, links are in the description. Go forth on your journey with our blessings.